What a tune. We're back. The Four Wheel Drive podcast driven by Shelter. Again, music by the Southern River Band. Let it ride. What a tune. This is the Four Wheel Drive podcast on Instagram. Back chat is where you'll find us on YouTube. Ronnie, we're back for another rep, mate. We are back and uh, I'm feeling a bit bit dusty and tired, I've got to say. Where have you come from? Uh, well, just came from the hills and uh, we stayed there last night and it was so freaking cold. I didn't get much sleep, to be honest. Right. What we what, what were you in? Uh, well, I was I was in I was in a troopy in yep. in the roof conversion. Um, luckily, I had my sheep pelt with me because I lay on top of that. That that's so warm. But I only had one sleeping bag, and it, it, it must have got below zero. Yeah, right. It was ridiculously cold. And how'd the troopy go? What was the? Uh, have you done much camping in it yet? Well, oh, I'm do- I haven't done enough camping. Yeah, I've done camping in it, but not enough. Uh, this was great because I got to try out the new kitchen. Oh, beautiful. So, yep. uh, new kitchen that my mate Sean from Mission 4x4 yep. um, has designed. He designed this like, thing like 12 months ago and he's made a couple of little tweaks for, for my setup because I'm doing a troopy with four seats, not two seats. Yep. And um, yeah, it was bloody good. Have we done, have you, yeah, we need to have a good look through that, don't we? Because that is a pretty cool, we just, just had a quick go through it then. Yeah, just, um, just before, yeah. And it's a pretty cool setup because it's unique with the four seats, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's it's quite unique with the four seats, uh, which does mean I'm limited on space, but also it makes sure I don't put too much weight in it. Yep. You know? Yep. I can still flip the seats down and put all my clothes there and stuff, so uh, yep. on the spare seats. But Yeah, it looks um it looks unreal there. Like it, There's a lot know. of red light going on there, but um that's that's so uh, I can still what see it. What about under the night. car, mate? Well, that's party lights. We had it in <laughs> rainbow mode and it just goes through all, all the different colours. It's pretty cool around camp. We're, we're trying to get people into four-wheel driving and you're putting this on your car. I think people are going to get scared at the price tag on that sort of stuff, mate. <laughs> uh, honestly, that was like 150 bucks or 200 bucks, <laughs> the lights underneath and did all, all the eBay. wiring ourselves. Yeah, so. nice. It's, um, uh, it looks awesome, yeah. mate. It looks, uh, looks like you can have a ball in that and, and can fit the whole family in, which is awesome too. Yeah, yeah, the kids don't get to go upstairs though because uh, I don't want sand on my sheep pelt. So that's just for me, me and the missus. So. Yep. Yep. No, it looks unreal. Well, mate, if you're not too tired, um, no, I'll be all right, mate. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a look through our uh, our favourite destinations. Now, you've yeah. travelled a lot through Western Australia, Australia. Um, I feel like you're gonna be oh, you're gonna have to. It's gonna be a tough. Episode. Yeah, it's gonna be tough to, for you to, to actually narrow this down. I feel like I'm gonna have to pick, make choices. Yeah. And then try and remember. Exclude a few. Yeah, remember where you've been. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's. I'm, I'm thinking now. Yeah, we'll get ready. I'm trying to think of what you might you've ask. You've got me. the broadest question ever coming straight to you right now. <laughs> the favourite trip you have done so far. Now, that Are you sounds serious? like I'm reading that off a, off a script because I am. The We've fa- written that note down. <laughs> but oh, goodness. I don't know how else to word this one. Have you got one? If you uh, don't, that's okay because I've got more questions for you. Look, yes. Uh, look. Oh, man. Okay, I'm just going to say the Baxter. I know I've talked about this a few times here already. Yep. Um, and I've, you know, we've, we've spoken off off podcasts about it as well. Um, awesome area. You've got everything down there. But I just want to stress there's, there's heaps of other places that are almost as cool. But if I had to pick one as a favorite, which is a very tough thing to do that that will have to be it. Yeah. And where, like the Baxter is where for those so, who don't know? So it's like... Like me. It's it's in the it's in a southwest but eastern part of the southwest of the country. Oh, we've touched on yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's in the eastern part of south, uh, um, western Australia, in the south part, but towards the border. So it's it's really nothing. <laughs> there's nothing out there civilization-wise apart from roadhouses and a shit ton of history. You know, Afghan camel traders. There's uh, there's the you know. Edward John Baxter, who got shot. Yeah, that's right. There's, it's coming back to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's just, uh, it's just such a cool area. It's just cliffs. There's Bill Bunyan dunes, which are one of the biggest dunes in, I don't remember what that is, but maybe the Southern Hemisphere. Yep. I have been told I was wrong about that on YouTube, but that's what Wikipedia told me. So Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> if it's on the internet, yeah. it's going to be true. <laughs> oh. um, it's just an awesome area. Like Esperance is a wicked town as it is as well. It is cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. But my second favourite will probably be the Pilbara. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. Jaden. Jaden country. Yeah. Pilbara. The man beyond country. Oh, yeah, that's me. That's that is, me. Up uh, there. Yeah. Bit of a bit of a great location, Ronnie. Well done. Ashburton in particular too. Ashburton in particular. I'll see if I can find some Pilbara. photos of uh, Ashburton up there. Yeah. Got some mates in the Shire there. What were you the um 
what were you the captain of, mate, in your, at your primary school? Oh, the old faction captain. Yeah. Yeah, I shouldn't have told you this. Uh, it was <laughs> Fortescue. Oh, you were yeah, Fortescue? So, yeah, oh, the, sorry, the, the factions Ashburn. were Ashburn and Fortescue. Colour were you? Red. Ah, oh, red for yeah, Fortescue. Yeah, red for Fortescue. Nice so touch. I was, uh, yeah, year seven faction captain. Well done, mate. Uh, one of my proudest moments, only downhill yeah, from absolutely. here, obviously. <laughs> Not at all. Um, so, it, what about outside of WA? Favorite trip? Oh, outside of WA. Uh, oh, it'll, oh, it'll be to Flinders. Oh, Flinders yeah. Flinders Rangers. Yeah, yeah. I'll I feel say. like that gets a little bit neglected, the Flinders. Like, I, I don't know. Is there. I think South Australia gets neglected. Yeah, you're probably right, you actually. Know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been through the Red Centre, Simpson Desert, and various places on the edge of Queensland. I want to do more in Northern Territory next year. Definitely going to do heaps more Northern Territory. Yep. Um, uh, what, one of my camera guys, Jono, he's from the Northern Territory. Right. And he, he's got bulk contacts as well. So we're going to find some cool stuff. Yep. So I have a feeling that my favourite place in Australia will change in a matter of. Uh, 12 months <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> yeah yeah you're set for a big year next year aren't you i'm set for a big year traveling so the troopy is nearly done it yep. needs suspension uh that was supposed to go in tomorrow but that's been pushed back because they're waiting on parts and that's been the story of my troopy life lately yep um but to to, to the credit like they they want to get certain parts rather than using these other parts which i could get by with but you know to the credit suggested wait till friday yeah which i can wait for just get it done right and then quick test trip like a test run in wa and then we're going to hit the nullarbor and just head over to sydney yeah right uh, yep. just do all the shows but do trips in between and yep. then 2024 because that'll be like the test run you know half the country yep and then whoosh, go around yeah right probably more of a figure eight really just willy-nilly be cool to see so obviously the nt is a highlight of what you're looking forward to. Is there anything else that sticks out that you really want to yeah, get into? Yeah, I think we'll start with, if I can start with a bang, it'll be the canning stock route. But I think at the time I'm going to leave, it's going to be too hot. I think it's going to be closed. Right. So I may go up through the Pilbara, wet season through the Kimberley if it allows me, if the Kimberley allows me to go through yeah, the wet season. Yeah, that'd be something different actually to, to do that then because... Yeah. Okay, so uh, an unforgettable trip. Let's just put that out there. I went to the Kimberley in wet season, um, met some great locals at Doondoon, uh, at Doondoon Station or Doondoon Community. Um, actually, uh, Lekka went up there as well. Oh, yeah. And uh, did some fishing. And, but the lower Ord, so the lower Ord uh, we went to in wet season. And one night it was raining sideways with crickets. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It was so humid the first night we actually got there was so humid it was the shittest night i've ever done camping but i'll never forget it it was so hot like my fan ran out of power we were we were eating smashing torben's icy poles he had nothing left in the freezer there was like no beers drunk at all because it would just make us feel sick and we were trying to sleep away from the river couldn't go in the water saltwater crocodiles the next day um my spontaneous thoughts on the way there was I bought a swimming pool from Kmart. We took it to the edge of the lower ord where we could actually see because we could arrive in the dark as I always do. But then the next morning we moved, the, we built the pool next to the lower ord and then we had a daisy chain of buckets while someone was crock spotting. <laughs> Filled up the pool about halfway. It was like 22,000 litres. So it took a long Jeez. time. And uh, that was, then it was probably one of the best nights ever in in a in a shitty climate yeah right but it was one heck of an experience and i know i just spoke about going back there at the same time wet there season it's a great experience but yeah that first night was was terrible hopefully the next time has a few more uh positive memories from a from the start for you but um yeah oh, it was it was a good trip i mean apart yeah. from my mate harry he broke his back when he broke his back he broke his back we had to take him back on the boat um there's Bloody a hell. rock called jump rock in the upper ord my suggestion is don't go there and don't jump off it. Jump rock, it would be hard to decline that that <laughs> offer though, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, right. So the Kimberley wet season. Uh, if it allows. What, else? what was the other one? The Flinders Ranges. Oh, uh, yeah. What about, um, I've seen through my, not my travels, but my YouTube travels. Um, what about like the Lithgow area, Coffs Harbour, like those hard four-wheel drive I tracks? I forgot like, about that. What are they, have you done them before or are yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, you have. Uh, Balbone Gap, I did with a trailer. And that's the one where you got that massive boulder 
and and like your brakes you get to a point where the weights and the brakes it doesn't work anymore your brakes just go boom and then you're at the bottom it's so steep it was so cool um it's one of those rocks you're not going up the other way with a trailer (laughs) yeah uh so musa uh from aussie four wheelers he's a crazy guy absolute legend he took us around there his patrol is like on 40s of these trepidors here and uh we foolishly followed him around but um you know there's always a chicken track and some yeah yeah most of the time uh i bit off a bit more knock a chew i should have chosen a chicken track i didn't and uh nearly tipped the vehicle um that was uh, episode four of lift go uh but then like a call for the winch and and Musa's like, oh, pavement princess threw all these rocks down <laughs> and then uh, winched out. And I was, yeah, I think I changed my undies that day. <laughs> <laughs> come prepared, that's what they say. Yeah, um, definitely come prepared. Yeah. Now, that, that stuff looks, that almost is a bit too hectic for my liking, I reckon. Like, with what I'm trying to do. Well, it's gnarly. Yeah, like, that. that's full on. Like, that's pretty scary for mine. Yeah. Especially with, like, if you're, my rangers, my, my daily, I don't want to, I don't want to wreck it to the, to the extent that, that no, those no. tracks can wreck your car. Yeah. Oh, that's next level, I think, from... Yeah, wrecking your cars is not the best I'd, I, idea to do, but sometimes you you just you can't help it. You're a long way from home, too, if you wreck your car yes. over there. If you're from yeah. WA. You just remind me of something else. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> there's a few on the bucket list. You've obviously... You've, you've done a lot in Australia. What about outside? Have you done anything outside of Australia? Have you been... Yeah, um, went to the USA. Uh, did Utah... Arizona. What were you driving there? I was driving driving a Jeep on 37s. Oh, right. right, okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was like on a, I think it was a four inch or maybe a, a five inch lift. Tiny. 37s, Rubicon. Awesome rig, man. That thing was so cool. That's when I really had mad respect for Jeeps. Yeah. It was like, wow, this is so cool. On the highway, it was good. Like, yeah, it right. got up to decent speeds as well. I was trying to keep up with, with the other American lads, you know? Yeah. Um, I travelled there with uh, Justin from Patriot Campers, oh, absolute yeah. legend of a bloke. He seems like a legend, that dude. Yeah, yeah, he's he's pretty cool, and he's pretty out there too with some of the stuff he does. But um, that was cool um, travelling with him. He, was, I had the choice between the Ford Ranger and the Jeep, and I was like, I think he knew what I was going to say. I was going, Nah, I'll take the Jeep. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and he was in the Ranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, not because the Ford. I don't like a Ford Ranger. Just, yeah, what are you saying, mate? Well. The Fort Ranger was on 33s <laughs> and I had this Jeep on 37s. I'm like, I'm in the USA. I'm yeah, going to drive yeah. a Jeep, not a Ranger. Yeah, yeah. That's fair, mate. I'll get all the off this time. Um, it was manual too. No, it was auto. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd hope so. Um, what, yeah, what's what, what's the US like then? What, what's, the diff- what's the main differences between like doing okay. the, going to the Pilbara and where, where did you say you went? Vastly different. Okay, so um, we went to Moab actually. Moab. Moab, Moab, Moab reminds me of um, Cooper Petey. Oh, right. Never it's been there, so, I've seen a lot of photos. It's just so wild, you know. And um, it's just all rocky stuff. So it kind of looks like a Pilbara without um, spin effects. Oh, is this? Oh, where? Is, um, that, Mo- is that? That's probably, yeah, somewhere in Utah. Did you just Google oh, Moab, Jaden? I think you just Googled that. <laughs> I didn't see that. But, um, I've just Googled that's Moab. That's painting, mate. So, yeah, okay. No, that, if that's anything what it looks like, though, that's incredible. Type four wheel drive Moab. And then you'll probably get a cooler shot. You'll probably get a car parked on the very edge of a cliff. We didn't go to that cliff, but we were going to. It's like this iconic cliff. You can park your car and it looks like it's on the edge of, um, you know, of a cliff, which it probably is. Right. There's your Jeep. That um, that thing has rear steer. Look at that. Look at a rear wheel. So it can steer in a rear wheel so it can go around corners. We saw a, um, <laughs> we saw a, a Hummer out there, similar configuration. I mean, that might be a Hummer, eh? No, is that a Jeep? It's hard to tell. So modified. Um, So that there is, what's it called? Um, Devil's something. I forgot what it's called. I should bloody remember that. We were going to do that, but um, we had this impending storm and it was raining heaps and the Jeep I was driving looked kind of similar to that. That's on the screen there. There's this Jeep climbing up a big, um, um, almost like a crevasse kind of thing. Um, I decided not to do it. We all decided not to do it yep. collectively. It wasn't my car. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty nerve wracking nerve wracking climb, but we did do the hot tubs and the hot tubs was, was insane. So it's this it's this like 
indent in the rock so you drive down and there's water in the bottom so then you wet your tires and then you try and climb out oh, yeah. and then the jeep was literally sitting there just spinning the wheels and you know if you're not if you haven't done much full driving before you might freak out and just put the foot down that's when you start bouncing and then you roll the car yep. and what whatnot so i just sat there and just slowly heated the tires up just tried to hold that lucky having an auto there that's that's a great yeah, example yeah, yeah. of driving an auto and it just gripped and then just took took us yeah, over right. yeah so what state was that in so okay you told me three times uh so moab is in utah utah right utah yep. moab <clears throat> yeah awesome awesome town yeah um we drove the uh the razors you know like um uh you know the the side side by sides oh yeah yeah on yeah. the highway but that's that's legal <laughs> yeah it's legal oh, wow. everything goes in moab <laughs> Anything goes. It's is that crazy. just Moab or is that the rest of the US? I think it's just Moab, but I think you can get away with a lot of stuff in, in the US. Yeah, right. To a point. You know. well, even like the rig, the rigs that they roll around in, eh? it's like... Oh, my God. That is yeah. mental. Yeah. A lot of it's... I mean, obviously, it's over top. It's America. Yeah. 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 Is there anything else that's not US related that you'd love to try out? I would love to go to New Zealand. Yeah. I would love to go to Iceland. Uh, I would love to go even like to, to you know, in Middle East. You know, oh, yeah. there's so many cool, but Australia is so much more here to see. Yep. I reckon you could travel all your life and you wouldn't see everything yep. here. And then you obviously got your favorite places. I love to do the Ambadil again. Um, Simpson, I'll probably wait a bit before I do that because there's other tracks I want to do, you know, before that. Yep. Um, just a Flinders, been there a couple of times. I'll definitely want to go back there again. So you kind of get drawn back to, to really nice places because you'll camp at a beautiful place you'll drive this beautiful track that's you know uh, provides you with thrill and funs and memories but then you always see all these other tracks you don't have time for so you always want to go back yep um but there's there's just so much out there to see yeah have you got any must visits must visit the pilbara that's a must visit and so people wouldn't wouldn't think about that either like they might go to carrigini yeah. they'll go to carrigini but, but there's so much more there. This, yeah, there is heaps more there, and and the locals are pretty friendly. They'll yep. they'll generally point you in a good direction as well. Yeah. Um, and it it's so vast, so you know it's never going to get busy. Yeah. It's yeah, never going to get busy because some areas you actually need like a really capable vehicle to yeah. go, a reliable vehicle. Yeah. Um, oh, Flinders, you got to go there. Yeah. You got to go. I don't want to tell too many people to go to the backside because you got to be prepared down there. Yeah. That's like that's a serious trip. Um, plus, even Esperance like just uh, you, you know you know, if you go to Israelite Bay I don't yeah. know how set up you well, got I've never been there but I've been to Esperance a handful yeah. of times and it's just an hour away from Esperance is beautiful it's just so, yeah yeah like so much to yeah. do there east west or north it's just yeah, yeah it's pretty cool and, and it's pretty like it, it goes remote pretty quick yeah like the farmland ends pretty quick out, yeah, of, does, out of Esperance yeah. especially if you head to the east not yeah. so much to the west but um, yeah uh, driving to Israelite Bay I mean even there, like, that's most people could probably do that. I wouldn't do it in a soft rotor because yep. that that fisheries track is terrible. Yeah, right. Corrugations. Oh, it is so yep. bad. It's so bad. And like, um, so on corrugations, you want to sit like on seventy to eighty. It's usually that nice yep. speed. Sit at, up on top of them with like a twenty-five psi. Yeah. But in this situation, because it's so chewed up from weather events and all that, um, some sections you got to slow down to forty. And yeah, right. You, you probably know what that's like. Corrugations yeah. at forty. Yep, yep. You feel every bit of them going feel, that quick. Yeah, every yeah. single bit of them. Yep. Have you got anything for us, Jaden? Like, I know you grew yeah, up. Yeah, we're at the in Pilbara. Pilbara. Like, what's what else has that got going for it? What Pil- Pilbara wise? Yeah. Any mm. kind of locations and stuff. Yeah. Don't give away like the local secrets, but like um, just just so people have an idea because I think I, I love the Pilbara and I I've scratched the surface, admittedly, but. Um, there's way more than just Karajini there. There's so, so much. much out there. Yeah. There's so much out there. I mean, if you haven't done Karajini, do Karajini and like plan a few days for it because yeah. that, that's so big. Book but, ahead too in peak season because it'll be packed. Yeah, 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 100%. That'll be packed. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's, without giving away too many local secrets, there's so much up there. Yeah. There's so many like beaten tracks up there that you can just go off and you'll find a cool little creek that you can uh, yeah, stop so much at. Water, which you've been the hard to believe. You've been the Calgon Pool, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yep. I've yep. been there yep. actually. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Dago, you're you're a bit of a pilgrim man, aren't you? I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, um, I've had some mates live up there and and work up there. Um, not not in the mines, so it's sort of like in, they're not just up there for yeah, yeah. for work with the mines. They're actually 
gone up there for some time and um yeah every time i've visited it's been i just my eyes been wide open to what there's so there. much up there yeah there's so much up there that it's just and it, the the terrain changes so so vastly depending on where you are as well yeah there's just so much to see and there's so much um so much beauty up there isn't yeah. there and that red east, dirt yeah isn't east pilbara the biggest shire in the world or something i'm gonna have to google that i'm not gonna just yeah i'm not sure but it, it, it very well could be it they're they're massive it's, it's a, a massive of trial it's um <laughs> yeah. Yeah. ronnie is you're putting your life on the line with that one mate <laughs> yeah i think um even i know you've got the nt coming up hopefully in the near future but i've i visited kakadu and like places like that that i know they're they're big on the tourism scale like everyone knows about them um those, some of those spots in Litchfield and Kakadu and all yeah. that sort of thing, but they are just they are mind blowing as well. And, and you don't you, oh, some of these you don't even need four wheel drive to get to. Like they're just yeah, a lot of them just, just, just sort of paved. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but they um, but then a lot of them continue on, right? Yeah, there's so much more to explore if you if you do have the capability to. Mm. So that's the cool part about it. But um, yeah, so much in Australia that's just incredible. Where's your Where's your favourite place in WA? Um, I I would have to say Esperance is probably like close to yeah I, I feel like it would be it's got everything i think esperance and then i love what i've been to Exmouth a handful of times um i, I, I would, apart from the pilbara i honestly think the pilbara would would take the cake it's just a little bit more um a lot more planning is required yeah there's a lot time. more planning and and like you with, with esperance and Exmouth areas you've got the water and the beach nearby and it's really you know mm. it it's it's got that going for it. It's pretty busy though. It's very busy. Whereas like you go to Kelgans and it was just my mate and I. And, yeah. and then maybe um, a mining group comes in for yeah, lunch. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah, <laughs> which can happen out there as well. But that's like, you know, you meet some really cool people doing that too. But um, yeah, I, I think Esperance is probably the one I reckon. And I've got so much more to explore. Like I don't I don't have a lot of time on my hands to, to do much, but it's let's yeah, not, Esperance let's I've, not, I've used a lot of time. So, let's yeah. not forget about the gold fields as well. Like, the golf fields is is very big. Yeah, something I've never never, never been to. Well, I've been to Calgary, yeah. but never, yeah, never and anywhere else. Sorry, boys. Just before we get onto the gold fields, um, the Shire of East Pilbara is three hundred and seventy two thousand five hundred and seventy one square kilometers, which is meaning larger than the state of Victoria. Oh wow! Um, oh yeah, that's the state. Yeah, yeah. Big is, it, is yeah. it the largest? Australia, it, it, yeah, in the world. Yep. Yeah. Oh, in the world, it, it's it's the largest Shire in Australia. That's the information I've got. Bigger than Victoria. Even bigger than the Hobbitshire? <laughs> Whoa, that's... It's getting into areas outside of my knowledge. <laughs> the Hobbit as in the Hobbit? Yeah, the, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't know. I can't go. Dad joke. <laughs> Dad joke alert. <laughs> um, what were we talking about? Goldfields. Goldfields, Gold thank fields. you. Sorry, boys. Came in. Uh, favourite places. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, the, the Goldfields... Um, kind of slips the radar a bit for a lot of people i think it's um if you want to do like a big pilbara trip the golf field is actually a good place to go to just sort of like wet your feet a little bit yeah just to yeah you know yeah um your raw range is awesome you just gotta be careful how you enter there because if you get caught by the mine it's not really good um uh, that's happened to someone i know but i think he went the wrong way <laughs> um he got told to wait there and then he waited half an hour and he's like Fuck this, I'm going. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but like, there's there's so much in the goal. It's 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 like this huge spot in the middle that that I think it's would get overlooked a lot. Yeah, hundred percent. I I'd love to hear as well. Hit us up on Instagram at, at the Four Drive Podcast because there's there's so much through Australia that you, like I'm gonna say this, but like challenge Ronnie on a place that he hasn't like seen or heard of before because it'd be yeah. it'd be cool there's so much out there give us a place that i need to get to yeah. yeah and it'd be just cool to see like i'm sure there's people that live an hour from these places that it's just a hidden gem they might they mightn't want to share the secret but um you imagine living in esperance yeah well yeah you'd be flat with us or Albany. But, um <laughs> yeah or newman but yeah get 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 back All to us because it'd be cool if, especially if ronnie's going on a lap like it'd be cool to check out some of these places that maybe you haven't heard of before um is vic high country on your list Yes, yeah. yeah. We were meant to do it last uh, year, 2020, was it 2022? Yeah, yeah. We were meant to do it in 2022. Um, so we were in Sydney for the show, um, flew back. And then when I flew back to pick up the vehicle, we we're going to do something in the Vic High Country. Yeah. Caught up with, um, with a couple of guys there as well. But uh, 
everything started flooding. Right. It was literally flooding behind us. So we were like half a day ahead of the floods. So we, we, we started at, at a friend's place, um, the, the, the Overland Travellers. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Matt and yep. Holly. Yeah, they got some cool stuff coming out at the moment. Yeah, actually. they yeah. do. They've yeah. just done the canning as well. Yeah. Um, they actually popped past the, my unit the other day. Oh, did they? Say good day. Yeah, yeah, we could. Had yep. a good look at their ride and yep. yeah, unfortunately I couldn't show them too much of mine because it wasn't done yet. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, so we stayed there. But when we woke up the next morning, um, it, all the roads were closed behind us. Right. And it was rising. So we had to keep, we had to keep booting it. Yeah. Just go, 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 go. Yeah, right. And, That's, um, yeah. <clears throat> I do want to put in a complaint to Vic Roads. Ooh. Those roads were shit house. Oh, were they? Potholes everywhere. It was like uh, you know BMWs pull side of the road with like broken rims and flat tires. Really? And, yeah, yeah. Just so many cars were like, well, so many. We were, like, probably four or five. Yeah, right. Different. Well, that's a lot. Yeah. 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 Because like, of potholes, and we're like, boom. boom you yeah, know? Okay. That's probably the one. That's the one place that I'd love to. And um, it was three or four hours from home when I was growing up, but. It was just something that we never, we never did. So I'd love to, yeah. That's probably the biggest one for me is the Vic High Country. Yeah, but I'd love to do it with like some people that know y- as yeah. well, just to know show where us it like is the, and that. the, you know, yeah. And it can get pretty hairy. Yeah, it's gonna be the right time of year, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and and depending on the time of year, the right type of tires and some tracks yeah. will be closed because of the snow and the water and yeah. It's yeah. um, but still, either I think any way I'd get, I'd take the High Country. Yeah, you just I, have to be prepared. I would like to get some elevation, to be honest. Yep. I haven't really been that high in elevation um, yet because like even the, in the country I was born in, Denmark, I think the highest hill was 400 metres. In Denmark? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so low, man. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like you watch the, the Viking series. It's all filmed in Norway. Oh. Uh, actually, I think it's actually filmed on um, England. Yeah, the Great no, Britain. Yeah, I think yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's Scotland, maybe. I reckon. Yeah, something yeah. like that. So that's Den- one of my favourite series ever. Denmark's actually. flat. Yeah, Denmark's right. Flat, I would yeah. not have expected that. And WA is flat too. Have you watched Vikings? Yes. How good is that? I think I watched every single episode. Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah. Actually, you got a bit my, of a Viking look about it. My there. previous uh, company that I used to run before I got into full driving um, was well, I was full driving at the same time. Um, had the, had Viking in the name. Yeah, right. Yeah, before yeah. the show was out. Oh wow. Is there a bit of a? Can we sue them? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a bit of thing <laughs> going on. Yeah, uh, I think I know your answer to this, but niche versus popular places. Like we touched on a little bit before, we go to Exmouth, you go to Coral Bay, niche. you go to niche. I know, niche, niche, yeah. niche. Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, look, like you said, popular places. They are still a must visit. They're pop. They're popular for a reason, aren't they? Like they are. Yeah. Like just the, just the beauty of them, and, yep. and I think Carrigeni being popular is still a niche place. Yeah, I've been there twice and never had too much trouble. Yeah, sort of shoulder season though, like for the yeah, the you know the main tours. He sort of threw our winter down here, but yeah, I niche niche all day long. But it's oh well, yeah, it, yeah. I, I think like the popular places you do have to see. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and they're usually you're passing through or something. Yeah, yeah. And then I suppose for the niche places, you'd need to be a little bit more set up, and that's yeah. You know, the, the previous episodes that we've done, you you. You know, we touch on that sort of stuff that you need to be set up for, but um, I mean, yeah. The Kennedy Range is a great example of a niche place because it's it's in the Gascoigne. Yep. And you're either on your way to Exmouth or you're on your way to the Pilbara. No one really goes to the Gascoigne to go to the Gascoigne unless you're going there for work or you're a, you're a four-wheel driver that's looking for a niche place. Yep. And that is one absolute amazing and beautiful place. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. What about favourite place close to Perth? Your oh. hills guy. Look, Mundaring is so close. Yeah. Um, there's a few spots I know out there. Yep. Where you're not going to get bothered during the week. And, you know, we do the right thing. Yep. yep. Um, so, yeah. Yep. There's, you know, um, that's generally where I'll go. Oh, there's also Brunswick and Harvey. Uh, there's so many cool places. On the coast... Actually, this time of the year right now, when it's winter, is actually the best time on the coast because there's there's no wind. Yeah, but it's bloody cold. Yeah, where would where's it, where where on the coast is your? Oh, uh, look, I love going to around Savantes, north of Savantes, and and um, used to go to Sandy Cape a lot. Yeah, but that place is is a bit too controlled now and yeah, a bit, okay. bit too busy. Um, that's generally 
where on the coast is it there's one garen as well that's a new sort of uh campsite area that, that's opened up so we used to go there before it was a camp area yep. run by depot um and so it was a niche place but now it's been like um made into an actual camp Designated area designated campsites yeah. and stuff like that and yeah. you're not supposed to take your trailer and stuff through because they don't want to recover people with trailers so right. there's, a, there's a few more restrictions yep. that have gone and happened and it's just just because this full driving is becoming more popular you know and that's just what happens you know yeah yeah right. you done much you would have done a bit fair bit of dwelling up wouldn't you that area yeah yeah, do, yeah. dwelling up yeah uh, so i reckon that is that's magic down there it, it's 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 nice there's yeah. been good campsites down there as well even though that they might be popular but in winter those campsites are not popular yeah, i'm telling yeah. you can imagine you're, you're gonna get most of the place to yourself because it's too bloody cold yeah yeah absolutely what about you Jaden? favorite place close to perth Oh, close to Perth. He's going to say uh, on the side of Whitman Park. How? how yeah. Well, <laughs> didn't want to how, how, how far? Though. How? How? Uh, how close are we? Are we actually going? I give you like mm-hmm. a well, what's what, like, hard, what's couple of hours? Like a oh, couple yeah. hours. Yeah, like hour and a half. Hour and a half radius. Be oh, hard, tough to do that. That's to the um, rest of it. <laughs> to, to the west. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I really enjoy going an hour and a half to the west, boys. If I'm honest, yeah, um, yeah, you, you'll be floating then. Straight thinking. out there, yeah. <laughs> um, seventy six floats. Wow, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I spend too much time close to Perth. If right. I'm if I'm going on trips, I'm going. You going? Yeah, I'm going away. Like I'm going Ooh. up to Exmouth, Ningaloo. Yeah. Or like down Esperance Way, is Albany, Doncaster, yeah, yeah, that right. kind of thing. You heard it here first. I'm not really nice. going too too close. The voice um, behind yeah. does not travel. Hates Perth. Less than an hour and a half. Or do I just love Perth and just, yeah. I, 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 honestly, boys, I don't know. But Whatever yeah, way you know, want to look not, at it. It's not too, oh, not, got, not too close. It's mostly have, um, far away. If you don't have it, then that's fine. No. <laughs> that's, that's all right. <laughs> hey, I mean, he's just writing down all the spots we're giving him. Yeah. Thanks, um, <laughs> thanks for your input anyway. He hasn't said anything about a pill, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, thank you, mate. We'll just keep moving on over here. <laughs> Um, all right, I know you're not a fisherman, are you? Not, are you? You wear the line, but you're not. Uh, I'm too honest to be a to to be a good fisherman. Too honest to explain I'm, that. Well, you just put your hand up and say I'm not good. The fish I catch are actually like this. Right, that's how honest I am. They're not like this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was this big. Yeah, so you're not like up in the camera. No, no, no. I, I don't mind that. No. Um, have you got a favourite spot for fishing? Where's where's where have you had your most luck? Oh, the most success I've had is down Bremer Bayway, uh, and uh, it's it's kind of a bit of a running joke with a few viewers or, on on YouTube that it's it's my secret uh, fishing spot because I didn't want to give away the spot. It's it's this I don't want to give away the spot because I don't want to upset the locals to start with, but also I don't want it to get too much traffic. Yeah, because a lot of people there's not many places to go and dig a hole and do your business, so a lot of people are doing the wrong thing. Right. So it's kind of like a spot where it's you, you go there to camp there. It's not like a, you move on or anything. Yep. It's got this beautiful little sort of lagoon. It's got this massive headland that goes out and it kind of blocks the southern winds. And um, like just fishing there, like you can see the bull herring and you just cast the line right Probably in the middle of them and you just pull them out constantly. I think Torbs did 19 in a row. Catch and release. But... 19 casts for 19 fish. 19 casts, 19 fish. Wow. Couldn't, couldn't get number 20. Take that on board for everyone out there that wants a yeah. Bremer Bay area. Might be might be where you'll find some luck. Because <laughs> every, everyone I watch seems to have no luck fishing anywhere they go. Well, as soon as the cameras come out, the word is, oh, is the that fish, fish disappear. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I've I've never had a camera out when I'm fishing and still haven't had much luck. That's but uh, Esperance for me was like the... that's they We had a day out there with a few... Um, a few locals who who took us out and we had a ball of a day and they we got off we, we finished up we we come back in this was offshore we we're on boats and and they come back in and apologized to us for the day that they were like oh, sorry boys slow day slow day today and, you, and you're we it? we i thought it was best day ever <laughs> on fish wise it was like it was unbelievable we just bringing in nanny after nanny it was just incredible wow. and they they apologized to us and said that it was a pretty slow day i was like geez it must be it must be good down here, but um, that, that was from that was worse. my best experience uh, fishing. What about your four wheel driving? Like, what's your favourite four wheel driving spot where you can just you like 
where you can play just time. Play time. Okay. The, well, that's got to be Harvey. It's got to be Brunswick. Yeah. Um, look, I have no problem in, in talking about the Staples line. That's a really cool track. It got, Staples line. Yeah. It got bulldozed recently for um, fire management. Yeah. So lo- often these tracks, they get like so cut up. But this, this track is meant for big wheels, lockers, lifts, winching. Yep. And there's a hill called Pipe Hill. It's gnarly. But all that got bulldozed about a year ago. And it's all pretty flat now. Because right. I went there and it's like, oh my God, it's all flat. Um, so a place like that, I have no problem sharing because it needs the traffic to make the track more interesting. Oh, and right, then it's yeah. going to get bulldozed again. Yep. So it's always going to get fixed because uh, the fireys need to manage the area. Yep. And I think that work on like this area hasn't been managed in so long. Uh, so there must be a build up, you know, to do the uh, back burning and all that. Yeah, yep, yep. Uh, that, yep. that track's hectic. It's yeah, fun. Right. Yeah. So that, that pipe is the Harvey area. Yeah, pipe, it's, it's, it's the Harvey, pipe? Harvey area. Yep. It, it's, it's called the Staples, line. It's, Staples run, line. it's run by a full drive club. Um, sorry to if any of the club members are watching this. I can't remember which full drive club it is. Yeah. But it's through, uh, it's through the track care and all that stuff. Yeah, well. righto. Yep. Yeah. There you go. I don't really have my favorite four-wheel driving spot. I don't know. I just love bashing around the hills. Yeah. You only get a couple of hours. It's just so close that you can just head out there and turn off the road and you're into it and for a bit of fun and, and a look around. Look, Sand Hill's a good fun as well. Um, yeah. You know, like around Wilbinger and yeah, stuff. That's, yeah. You yeah. Can, there's, Wilbinger is like a great testing zone. It is, for, as long as you stick to the tracks though. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Is it, Do you mean like as in... Oh, instead of people doing like new... Over, but, over over the, the veg, vegetation yeah that that is it's actually like yeah it's pretty crazy out there isn't it how yeah and how i don't get why are. people feel the need to do it it's like there's all these challenging tracks yeah if you can't manage those maybe you don't yeah try and make a new one yeah <laughs> yeah no i agree i agree um camping spot i think yeah, yeah. I think any camping by river is definitely you got that water around the best you? yeah and there's there's heaps around there's heaps around. And anywhere you can safely light a fire. Yeah, Jeez, yeah. Geez, that makes camp. Yeah. and Trying unfortun- to camp without a fire. Unfortunately, in WA, between... Well, well, there we go. Gone We're early. just about to go into it. So, Getting unfortunately, the there's, there's a section in like on the calendar in WA, you just can't... Well, from the tropical Capricorn south, you can't have fires. Is that the line, is it? I think I so. I think this this morning. Yeah, because beyond that, like... Uh, look, by the time we get to the, to the Pil- I mean, to the Kimberley... You can have a fire anytime. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Obviously you've got to be smart about it. When it's forty degrees, you don't want to fire unless it's wet season and you're in a place where you're allowed to have a fire and there's just sand around because that fire is going to evaporate all the humidity so you can tolerate um the heat. So it's hotter near the fire, but the humidity is gone. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well we're talking about fires, it's um it's it's got me thinking that it's a unique situation that one. Maybe we should uh Head towards the so. fire pit. Oh, I probably should. I think you're struggling there. to to start it. Yeah, yeah. You got, you got your flint. Oh, there we go. You started it. There you go. Sorry, um, boys. We we're having nah, an issue with the flint there. Just yeah, 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 yeah. I think no, but we've we've got it now. Hope you're feeling warm. Flint is the code word for Liam. Um, it was who had the issues. <laughs> uh, just forgot what he was what he was here to do for a little bit there, but um. <laughs> Anyway, there's, we'll, there's no mistakes when forward driving, mate. No, and that's there's no well, mistakes when forward drive podcasting. Yeah, maybe podcasting keyword there, because <laughs> um, I've seen some mistakes forward driving. Hand it over to you, you mate. Saying it was a bit bogged, or or I what? was bogged then hard. Were you in manual? Oh, uh, I was <laughs> bogged driving a manual. I had no idea what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky Jaden's here to save us for a round no, five. No, it's it's all good, boys. We all uh, we all get stuck sometimes, don't we? <laughs> what do what do we always say, Ronnie? Just take a photo of it and uh, waiting for a mate. Yeah. yeah, just you, know, you can always fall back on the voice behind uh, at Whiteman Park, stuck in the sand. Yeah, geez, that builds me with that much confidence when I hear that story. <laughs> that story um, may never come out, boys. Just you it know, will, mate. It's I've, I've been vulnerable. I've said I can't die for manual <laughs> in in the past, so <laughs> I'm just waiting for everyone, just everyone's uh, secrets to pour out. We'll see. Four wheel drive podcast where we're getting <laughs> all the secrets out. <laughs> we should skeletons check in our closet. Closets. We should check his search history on, on car sales. Is he putting in manual or is he putting in auto? No, <laughs> yeah. I still, I yeah, what, are you, what are you looking at when no, you're looking I search, at car I search, sales? I, they're mainly manuals, actually. But okay. you can't drive a manual, mate. So what the are you looking at? I figure for? that I'll just get it and then I'll worry about getting a license <laughs> later. 
<laughs> I'm going to have to tip my windows if I ever do this just yeah. so no one spots me driving a manual. <laughs> wow. Any police watching or listening to this, just... Hey, but they you never know when they'll need me to pull them out of the Yeah, the sand, that's true. Like, yeah, like we've seen in yeah, the past. Yeah, we have here. seen we have seen some yeah. some cops so stuck. Just, so yeah, well, no, give and, yeah. give it a bit of give and take. We'll see. Anyway, Dago, you'll um they'll let you pull them out first and then Yeah, and then arrest. So you in the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh this first image, Dago, I think yeah. you've got a bit of um a few bit of background faces on here. this. Yeah, if you obviously want to give us a run through, through this. Yeah, that's yeah. Just anyone. We've got we've got like three listeners on this podcast, and they're my mates, so they're yeah. actually they're so, filling us with plenty of um. Well, they'll know what intel. the picture is, but if there's yeah. another viewer that's not uh not not watching this on YouTube, uh, you want to? Yeah, give no. Us a this, so this is uh, my mates. Um, my brother's actually in this photo. They're they're quite young here, so it's a few years back now, but um, pretty much. They're in the bush near home, near Backus Marsh, the Wombat State Forest, uh, the Lurdy Dergs. I don't actually know where they were, but in that area. And they've sunk their GU, basically. Um, yeah, three litre GU. Yep. And he like loves his cars, this bloke. Hamish, he's the one that drives the troopy now that um, that we love. But yeah, he, he sunk his car here. The funny part about this whole story was that they, they were all fine in the end. They got this, they, they actually didn't have service, so they had to, Someone's had to trek out to the road. I'm pretty sure to get a, like a bar of service. Yeah, yeah. There was like I don't know how many there were. Oh, like, so there's just one car in a situation. Yeah, all these people in all the car. Yeah, so that, that like the driver's not actually in that photo. And then I'm pretty sure that there's there would be someone else walking out the road. So I don't and know if they were legally sitting. <laughs> I don't know if they're all belted up here. <laughs> but um, yeah, they've got service. Got a mate to come and fix him up. But the funny part was they because they didn't have service. They were worried that well, my brother's got a. So my brother's the one second from the left there. He had um he must have been in year twelve at the time, or don't know when, but he he had an exam like the next day or something like that. And um, this is late in the Arvo, obviously. Yeah, I think this was late in the Arvo. <laughs> and they were actually like they weren't sure if they were getting out because they, they couldn't get out without help. Um but because they had no service and they I, I, they would have known where they were, but yeah, they've obviously had to send someone out to the road, but wasn't guaranteed to get service there either. So it's like, how far are we going to actually have to go to get oh, service? Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, the funny story was he got to his exam all good. They still talk about it today. I had dinner with these boys last night actually, and they um and I yeah. Did we, he drive through his exam in a soggy car? <laughs> nah, well no. So he no that he wouldn't have driven to in that in that car. I actually don't know how that car went. I reckon he got rid of it not long after. Ooh, um, is the number plate covered? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's, is it? Or Who's is it now? Um, but yeah, it's a, it's funny. But this area, like like we say, because we're quite WA based here, obviously because we're we're all from here. But um, this is a great little for people that live around Melbourne. This so we're only about forty five to an hour. It depends when you leave. Actually, if you're in peak hour, it's going to take you a while to get out to where we live. But if you any other time of the day, we're we're not far from Melbourne at all. And this like this whole area, awesome camping, four wheel driving. You get all sorts of um, of challenges, if especially if you want to go up there in the winter. Like it, there is some awesome stuff to do up there. Um, so there, there's just another little spot that's not far from Melbourne. I, I dare say because there's so many blokes in one car, there would have been a bit of egging on about this. Oh no like, doubt, do it, yeah, yeah, go yeah. through it. Yeah, no doubt. And like they're they're all young, they're all young there. Yeah, so yeah. that's Like they would have been learning on the fly a bit there too. So it's. Um, I wonder how many deep ones they just did before that one. <laughs> yeah, well that's it. Yeah, they would, they would have been having a ball all day. I don't actually, I don't even know why they were out there, but yeah, um, just having fun. The yeah. old confidence builder bog holes until you you meet the ultimate bog yeah. hole. Yeah. Yeah, and I could imagine that would have stunk real nice too. Oh yeah, that stuff stinks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they look like they're having a good, a good time. Yeah, they're pretty relaxed there, aren't they? Yeah. I don't know if it started, as it got a bit dark. I'm not sure. My brother probably would have hit the panic button a bit, but <laughs> he, he made it. <laughs> having an exam the next day, that's uh, that's nightmare yeah, stuff, yeah, always, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um. Anyway, this next one in from Snyder underscore. Is that snow? Yeah. It, it it very much looks like snow, doesn't it? So, anyone who's um who's listening what have, what have we got here boys well okay do you, so do you need me to explain because you probably are you struggling to see oh, yeah, that a little bit it looked like sand <laughs> snow, also snow so that it looks like he's, he's on a track that might be cleared but how do you know what a track is I I've got no idea about snow driving but that looks pretty I can't pretty even tell dense. if that's a cat or a dog it actually looks like a cat but that's I know it's a dog. dog. I know it's a <laughs> dog, but it looks like a cat. Can we go to help Ronnie out here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, man. He's out of his glasses. 
we've got we've got i don't know what this is if this is a wagon or a ute but possibly yeah, Prado, Prado type thing. Uh, It'd be like a Lexus a, or something. Yeah, Mitsubishi. It's definitely overseas because it's stuck up north. We're, we're definitely not getting snow up north. Yeah, here, that's so true. It, north. Yeah, those um, trees. On the odd occasion, Vic High Country, but Vic High Country. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I mean, but yeah, that, that wouldn't but be Vic High Country. Up, this is. I'd say north, this is Canada or America. Yeah. So um, for anyone listening, we've got uh, we've got a Prado oh, yeah. or something just stuck, bogged in the snow. Front left is almost all the way down to the to the headlight front right is coming up a bit bloke in high vis uh his dog out looks very stuck in this snow yeah i reckon he's been i reckon um, this car's been there a while because there there's snow on top of it like yeah. caked on it looks pretty cold too i reckon if that dog stayed in that pose it'll be staying in that pose. yeah <laughs> And he no, he might actually be stuck there right now it's like, <laughs> looks like taxidermy from here <laughs> there's no clear track in or out like there's no it doesn't look like this yeah that's any it's, tire marks it's an around interesting by. one isn't it I reckon but it's been there a couple of days I'm going to I'm, I'm yeah. going to take a yeah. guess and say it's been there a couple of days I mean the lights the, snow, the lights are on yeah maybe they're, reckon, tro- maybe they're yeah. attempting their recovery now I don't know I think snow in general must be pretty challenging if there's been a heavy fall like if you don't know the area I mean you'd, you'd know like oh, there's trees lying the road here there's there's a road because it'd be like having a flooded road unless you've driven that area before sometimes if you've got like a bit of a crossing and it's flooded you don't know where yeah. the exit is yeah it'd be pretty easy to drive off the edge like in this case i'm assuming that he's just gone the wrong way yeah yeah i think you've you've hit it on there because there's a, there's what looks like a van in the background like a standard trady yeah. electrical van yeah, type yeah. thing in the background and that that looks like it's going along fine so yeah it's, i mean that, that's a hard one to dissect really here. yeah um good to know backstory yeah yeah interesting one but yeah four driving in the snow that's yeah that would be yeah that'd be something like, say high country we could yeah that could be something you get i'll be there. total novice in that yeah 100 percent. it'd be good though um anyway this next one in we've got from live underscore floro Let's see if i can get it up it is um she says it's a four-wheel drive four-wheel drive yeah you know, four-wheel drive truck and the Land Cruiser at an isolated beach off a bush track about 100 k's from Esperance. So, can WA. You, can you punch it right in? We'll zoom in on that. It looks like they've, they're stuck out there and they've had to get the four-wheel drive truck out. But it doesn't look like they're bogged or anything. Probably just a breakdown. Yeah. But, yeah, that's an interesting one. But Esperance is, Esperance is one of your favorite places, Dugo. You've got to yeah. You recognize the beach? No, I don't. But it's like a lot of the beaches down there are really hard, compact sand. Yeah, so that's that can what be makes deceiving, me think, but... Yeah, that you can't... Well, mm. yeah, I've learned that the hard way, but, but it, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, maybe it was a breakdown, but it does look like there's tyre marks um He's come off the rock, that it. truck. He's, he's driven over the rock to get there, I reckon. So it's interesting because I, th- I think that's just a breakdown, but talking about Esperance beaches, like, like they are rock solid. Yeah. And that squeaky sand, I think they actually use it to polish jewellery with. It's that fine. Is that right? Yeah, but you know... Uh, you know the Le Grand Beach? Yep. Yeah. So that beach, um, last time you were there, was it like a highway? Was yeah. It? Yep. Apart from the seaweed that I hit and got bogged in. But yes, it was. Yeah. 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 So last time I went there, because it's been a highway the whole time I've known about this beach. Yeah. But last time I went there, I took a whole tag on convoy because I was like, yeah, yeah, this, this beach is great. Soft as, narrow oh, as. Right. I knew the tide was up, but normally when the tide's up there, it's okay. Yeah. Um, so we drove into a high tide that was going to recede, you know, because I don't drive into a high tide that's coming up. Yeah. But it was receding because I had 12 cars with us. And we were like literally having to dodge waves to cross yeah, certain right. areas. I was like, nah, nah, guys, let's just turn around. This is, the, the beach was gone. It was like, it must have been a storm or something. Yeah. It was, it was like, it looked like a Wilbinga beach. Yeah, right. It was not like a it's highway. like anymore. a runway. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like you, like you shouldn't, but you could literally do... 110 yeah in two wheel drive yeah. on on that beach yeah that's that is how hard they yeah. are yeah. but you wouldn't do that because there's washouts and that will break your car yeah well if you if i'd have been doing 110 when i went down into that and i sort of got sucked in a little bit like that would have been i would have been flipped airbags over. and everything yeah yeah <laughs> i've seen a coffee van down there <laughs> there you go yeah, yeah that's how solid it is to be <laughs> yeah. a coffee van but not that day yeah right they'll yeah. be in the ocean that'd be imagine that i've, I've stayed coffee. at that i've stayed at that campground there that would have been nice just waking up to a coffee van out the front. And yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Best the grand, of both worlds. 
I think it's the same coffee that goes to Lucky Bay. You been to oh, Lucky Bay? Right. Yeah, I have been there too. Yeah, that yeah. place is awesome. But like, you're like, yeah, locked in the four wheel drive, drive down, and it's like coffee van. Yeah, don't I look like an idiot now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, magic spot though. Yeah. Uh, so that's it for photos. Um, we do have a couple questions, but um, yeah, we may have covered a bit of this in the episode. But we'll go through. We'll answer this one it's from Padre ninety eight. Um, and we'll just just give you straight away just one answer best yep. weekend trip and best long trip you go first uh, best weekend close to Perth is that no it just says best, best weekend oh, trip best yep. long oh, trip so, so yeah so. for me close to Perth best weekend to be um, just like south of Mandra just if you're going for a Saturday night between Mandra and Bunbury just picking up a spot on the beach there I reckon it's unreal um, you can do that the same north of Perth as well only an hour away that would be the best weekend I reckon uh, best long trip I, I reckon I'll say the Pilbara yeah I reckon take like take a good week or two to look around the Pilbara I reckon you'll you'll find way more than what you think you would um, yeah that'd be mine yeah good choices um, look Weekender, only because I was over in Sydney and I got to do the weekend. I hang out with, with Mooster and his crazy vehicle and his bloody big treps uh, around the Lifco area. I absolutely loved that. It was because I'd never been there before and he showed me all these crazy areas. And it's it's kind of like once you're there, you have to keep going. There's no turning back, especially you're towing a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, best long trip. Normally, I would say the Baxter area but i'm gonna say the ashburton when i did it in the hilux surprisingly enough the best longest trip will be in the hilux because we were in the ashburton region for like i think it was nearly 20 days might have been 21 days it's like felt like three weeks it was just shy of it i think and we saw so much we covered so much area it was it was awesome yep. it was a wicked time uh we even had stopovers in in um tom price and onslow it was such a huge trip just to resupply, you know, food, yep. water, a couple of cans. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, and our last one, so we can wrap it up after this, uh, from Alex Savas. Uh, Doug, you might have a bit of knowledge on this, but uh, have you guys been to the Victorian high country? I recovered a little bit of this. We did chat a bit on it, but uh, would it be a good idea to go there from Melbourne for my first camping four-wheel drive trip and how prepared do you think I should be? Yeah, so I, I haven't done any camping or four-wheel driving through there but what i know and i know plenty of people that have i I think there's something for everyone there no matter how um experience set up whatever it is that you are i think you can you can start off anyway in the high country you you type on the four um four by four high country on youtube you're going to find some some crazy stuff and then you're going to find the the touristy sort of attractions like the, the Dargo pub or whatever it is there's there's plenty of stuff in there for everyone um, but yeah I don't think you need to be too set up at all to, to get in there like a uh, couple of the, one of the boys that was in that photo before with the patrol his favourite place to go is Bright um, which is sort of I, I'm not all over this but I feel like it's sort of top of the high country sort of top left it's not far from Melbourne at all um, but you get a real taste for it sort of there and it's it, apparently it's just absolutely beautiful and there's something for everyone there from what I've heard so I'd, I'd say go with whatever you've got. Um, just don't push yourself too hard. But I think there's, yeah, there'd be definitely enough out there for for anyone. Yeah, I think you covered that pretty well, Doug. I, I, the only thing I would probably add is, is like the weather as well. Just pick the time of the year to go because yep. there be, might be a lot of easy options. But in winter, just in general anywhere, yep. those easy options are now difficult options or maybe shut as well. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, yep. the weather would definitely play a bit. I would love to go to Vic High Country. I've never been there. Would love to go. Um, Dargo yeah. Hotel, always wanted to go there yeah, as well. Yeah, that's like, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. But, um, yeah. That it, mate? That's it. No worries. What else you got, Ronnie? Anything? Oh, that's, I think we've, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I said it before, but hit us up with those places that yes. maybe we, we might be mentioning. We maybe, maybe haven't heard of them. I'd, you know. Yeah, um, I love. Tell maps. us a place we haven't heard of. Yeah, tell us tell us something we haven't heard of. Send a photo in of what it looks like, um, and we'll leave it, it leave on. it a mystery for us to find. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we might even take the podcast out there, boys. Yeah, Do yeah. A little, imagine that. Okay? Because honestly, finding the finding these places is half the fun. Yeah, 
you yeah, know? no doubt. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it sucks. You don't get to find the place that you've been searching for, but find the place is half the fun. Yep, yep. Now, hit us up. You know where to find us. We're the Four Wheel Drive Podcast on Instagram. You'll find all our episodes on Backchat over at YouTube. The Four Wheel Drive Podcast driven by Shelter. Thanks again. Toodaloo.